we're asking Michael Davis for all this. Now, um, I'm going to talk about Jawla. It's actually the title of the book of Ali Duhaji, which means Wife of Al. Jawla Bayna Hanat and Bahar al Mutawassi, a tour of the Mediterranean territories. I would like to start first by talking about the twigs in between. Where does this come from? Victor Turner, in, in, in the title in one of his famous books uh, called The Fix and Between, he says the liminal period in the right, in the Rite de Passage, that's what they used to do because Benjamin is the French thing, has shown that all rights of transition are marked by three phases separation, margin, and this is what we are talking about, liminality, and aggregation. So usually they are talking from an anthropological point of view and they have looked into any transition, any change of status, goes through these um, situations. Now, this uh, anthropological theory has been used uh, to understand literature to a certain degree, and especially criminality. Uh, Victor Turner can talk more about what his, his contribution really is in criminality and what he calls communities. But for now, we're talking about communities. Now, somebody like Hamid Hama says, criminality uh, is a potentiality disruptive in between us. And I'd like to, to, say, to say a few things about liminality and then if you have any question later on you can ask it. So liminality derived from Latin limen meaning threshold, liminal refers to the transitory in between state of space, which is characterized by inter interdependency, uh, ambiguity, hybridity, potential for subversion and change. The liminal third place of cultural emancipation constitutes inherently an alien territory, which uh, not only becomes productive on new meaning, social relation, and identity, but also disrupts and subverts established entities. And we are talking about here in a certain degree, it's you know a certain narration and uh, uh, nation and narration. It's a relation to build. Now here are. Um, I divide my talk into, into three liminalities, you may say, liminal, uh, liminal time to a certain degree, um, liminal um, writer, and liminal text. These are three liminalities. I have a fourth liminal, liminality, I'll talk about it toward the end of the half. So, um, here I would like to, to talk about the liminal uh, time, Tunisia, between uh, between and between the wars. So this, uh, the text is in the 30s, and that's a very important moment in Tunisia in really nation building in what, what is, what's Tunisia not going to be? It's a liminal time. I would say Europe as well was a liminal time in between the two wars as well. So this just as examples. For example, uh, conflicting views, and Nukba al and al the national intellectual, they had a lot of discussions, a lot of uh, disagreement. For example, Abdelaziz al Halbi um, ended up in jail actually for what the Sufis or religious scholars believed that uh, what he was blasphemous. Um, uh, we have a new uh, uh, political party, the earlier political party that is known as the Stur. Uh, from it, there was a new one called New Distur, the New Distur will be later on. The, the party of uh, the government in Tunis. Uh, so, a um, big name in Tunis is Tawar Haddad, uh, in his book, Al-Aqma fi Sharia wa al Mujtama, when he wrote this book about he, he's a feminist, and um, he really suffered a lot because his ideas of what he thought Tunisia should be related to the place of women was not accepted by the religious scholars of many people, and he really. Um, had the hardest time ever. Um, uh, there was also what he called Jama'at Tahti Sur under the bridge, and here also, to a certain degree, if you look in the beginning, there are all, all, all kind of opposites, two opposites. We also have here something Jama'at Tahti Sur under the bridge, it was an important uh, number of intellectuals together in a in coffee in a place called Under the Bridge, and the bridge itself is very liminal. It's in between this and this, it's connecting the two. So, um, so Tahti Sur uh, also had where versus uh, uh, Maqha al Banka, al Banka the bank, uh, another, another, you know, it's a liminal space again. Um, at that particular time, also Tunisia, that shows you they were, Tunisia was looking for what should Tunisia be? What, what kind of country should, should it be? And there, 
the creation of what, what, what is known now as Rashidiya by most of us. It's actually they uh, created a musical kind of school, but also they produce and teach and sing songs. So um, this is interesting because of all the repertoire in Tunisia, from Arabic, Mashraq, uh, or from Tunis, from, from everywhere, they chose one particular type of music, and that's the Andalusian heritage. So uh, Rashidia was really uh, uh, Andalusian music heritage, and that tells you to a certain degree the new look of the new intellectuals. They were looking for something that is Arab, but also to a certain degree Western. It's, it's a liminal, it's in between two things, two cultures. And, and Andalus is, again, was a bridge, it has always been a bridge between the East and, uh, and West. Um, I talk now about the, the author himself, Ali Bouhaji, uh, a liminal figure. Um, why a liminal figure? Um, Tunisians probably have heard the, the, the famous saying, Ashid man nafihimba mat jabul wa aqood ma mayisa'at fannan al ghalba illa min tahit al luhud. And actually, it's in the song. So, he lived all his life hoping for a grave. And when he died, they offered him a bunch of graves. So, the, the, the artist, according to Ali Duhazi, is happy only when he's under the grave. So, in that liminal space, to a certain degree, where you're not in the world and you're not in heaven, you're not in heaven. So you are in between and then you're a certain degree, that's where you are. Now, what's so interesting about him is, is that he can self-taught. I saw me, as we say in Arabic. You know, in a very important moment. And, la zaytuni wa la the two places at that time, the two types of intellectuals that were, you know, against each other, Either you are coming from Zaytuna, the mosque, the great mosque in Tunisia, the intellectuals, the religious intellectuals mostly are coming from there. Or you have been educated in the Western style in the Salif school or similar. So, most likely, if you were educated in the Salif school, you will adopt, like Rahiba later on, certain type of view of the West, accepting like certain part of the West, if not more. If you are from Zaytuna, you tend to be, and that's for the exception to kind of go for religious, for Arab, for all those um, traditional uh, aspects. Now, um, Adi Duhaj was influenced by several important Tunisian intellectuals and artists, Zina Abidin Sunsi, and here, uh, in this case of Sunsi, he was educated both in Salafia and Zaytuna. Right? Abu Qasim al educated in Zaytuna, but he is a, he's a poet. So he's, he has those two aspects of him because he was looking forward uh, the future. Um, Tahar al-Haddad, although he was educated in Zaytuna, but he was one of the greatest feminists. Uh, so, and uh, in Hadi Jwini, uh, we last time we sang one of his songs, Namuni I don't remember. So his, 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 his music in the beginning was, he went for the Al-Andalus to bring that type of music. Uh, to, to reuse it and make the new Tunisian and that's the new, the new heritage that we have. And that's telling of what influenced uh, Ali Duaj. And he belonged to the to the to the under bridge, Tahtasur, Jama'a Tahtasur, the group of Tahtasur. Now Ali Duaji as a liminal figure in my in my view and if you study liminality that's the moment of product productivity. When you when you are breaking the old and having to create the new, you are in that productive moment. And as such, because he belonged to a productive era, in a way, he really produced a lot. So he produced an intense creative output plays, short stories, songs, sketch art, uh, translated adaptation and plays, uh, originally written in French and Italian, as well as Arabic, uh, uh, into Arabic, sorry, and sometimes into Tunisian Arabic made important contribution to the literary magazine, uh, al Al Adabi, um, published in the 1930s, published his own uh, magazine, Surur, but more important to me, at least he considered himself what? Follow, okay, Bohemian style, lifestyle. And uh, um, I would like to uh, take this opportunity to look at the beginning of the text. We don't have the time to look at many parts of the text, but I found the best places to look um, uh, where. He says, لا أعلم من أين يجب ابتداء الحديث بالضبط. This is his his حنات. وكل ما أعرفه أني عزمت على كتاب هذه الرحلة التي قمت بها 
من في صيف هذه صعبة بعد العزم اخذت اليوم في التنفيذ ولا يكون تنفيذ الاخبار بنفس السهوله التي يعقد بها العزم وكل العسر متاتي من اني لم اتعاون تنظيم اعمالي ولست منظما في افكاري نفسها فانا فوضي منذ خلق فقد كان يلذ لي ايام الطفوله ان ابدا طعام الفواكه اذا كان هناك فواكه عن المائده وما زلت الى اليوم في عمر قصيده مبتدئا خاتمتها بل من امضاء صاحبها عقلها وهذا بلا شك نقص فيها اعتقد به ولكن لا اود تغييره لحق. So I, I don't know I think we don't have the time to go but I hope everybody knows Arabic but basically you get the idea here that he is Bohemian uh, Fawlawi uh, he starts things from the end not from the beginning he does not want to be the usual person that you know organized and all that and this is really a liminal entity that, that he is proud to, to be to be a liminal person uh, so um, I will come back to this text because I wanted to show part of what he's talking about related to himself and then but I'll, I'll come back to this text um, so a tour of the Mediterranean tavern, um, locally forbidden space. I mean, why choose Hanat? The bar becomes a source of alternate knowledge, especially the gaze into the hegemonic of it, into, into Europe. Yet it is also an opportunity to look into the self, because he gives us an opportunity from what we have seen from the very beginning. He talks about himself, but he talks about his country in a way and what he expects Tunisia to be. Is it Arab? Is it West? Where, where should Tunisia be? And this is clear actually in his idea about women. Uh, what kind of woman should be in one directly. Keeping in mind that his friend, Bahar Haddad, suffered a lot because of what he stood for for women. So, yet he is, I think, courageous enough to, to say his opinion, but indirectly. Um, so, Tawla Bayna Hanad, it's like a little tease. It's, it's really, as Tawil Bakar once says, يَسْخَرُ بِالْعَفْيُ وَبِالْإِبَاعِ So he's, he's made, he makes fun in a way uh, of, uh, of everything. If you are expecting to, to have fun, you know, uh, because this looks hanat, bars, you're not going to get that. But also, if you are a religious scholar looking for, you know, you're not going to find that. And I will read to you a couple of what the, some people said in Arabic. He says, uh, this is ممنوع على الناس والعربية. The opposite. To and that's, you know, the religious in a way. What I mean, you know, the, the person who is looking for fun and, you know. Um, so he does not hide from, again, sad, a sad and a sad, giving them the kind of funny name. من مجون يوحي به العنوان ولا هو يعطي للماجنين كل ما أثاره فيهم العنوان. So the people who are going, looking for the fun, they're not going to find that much there. But also the people who are looking for, you know, something to condemn, is Hanat and think about yourself. So again, the, the whole, the title itself tells us that this is a liminal text. Now, uh, Adu'aji presents a southern look at the north and a self-critique at the same time. The Mediterranean in both cases is a space of one's own and a vantage point from which to see the self and the other. And again, in every single turn, he is a liminal figure. Uh, for example, about Mustafa Kamal, he says, لا قدرتي على وصف ما شعرت به نحو هذا الرجل. I can't really describe how I feel about this guy. About Kamal. فقد كنت كنت أعجب به وأنقده وأجله في نفس الوقت. I like him and hate him at the same time. في نفس الوقت وبشعور with one feeling. I wonder how can you really have that? جعل هذا الرجل من تركيا دولة أوروبية قوية and the three dots are his or both so again that liminal that liminal space I want to also just mention something جولة and he throws some people say uh, when they reproduce the book they sometimes put جولة حولة it's not جولة he wants it بين because I believe بين is his original title is Bain, in between. And he says, Bain Hanat al-Bahar, Hanat al-Bahar mutawasr. So that's really, anyway, I think I could prove my point, so I'll, I'll, I'll go a little bit uh, fast. So uh, um, let me then, then just go 
skip a little bit. Um, again, so from a, the, the point of view of artistic, Jawla has two Arabic and even more narrative convention. It recalls the Maqama genre in which the adventure of a character are accounted in comic episodic fiction. However, the style is very different. Uh, the style is, is Tunisian, and I'll show you in the beginning how it is. He also hints at the Syrian genre, but with a, with a difference. It also recalls at the same time para, uh, uh, and para, paradises the Rihla. And we will see how in the very beginning he paradises the Rihla. So, uh, وعلى ذكر صدق الرواية أعترف أني سوف لن أحدثكم هنا بما اعتمدتموه في كتب الرحلات من ذكر غرائب المتاحف ونتائج المعامل وأعمال البحار وعجائب الطبيعة وشواقه الجبال لأنه رؤيتها فتأتي لأنه يقول لوصف لوصف هذا الشيء من لخلطت فيما أكتبه ما رأيت بما طلعت من هذه العجائب قبل رؤيتها فتأتي رحلة صادقة الكذب وذلك ما أخشى الوقوع فيه so he's not going the path of the uh, uh, logs as the and no, he's doing something totally different. Why? Uh, uh, because and here he's Sukhriya, uh, uh, he's uh, sarcastic. بمطالعة جراء اليومية وشبهها فإن فيها من تقارير جمعية الأمم ما يجعله فيلسوف مثل نيتشا في أقل من 24 ساعة. So you become a, a Nietzsche in 24 hours. And he's making fun here of the whole thing of reading, you know, the travel and literature, and then you will know about these things. أما أما اختيار العنوان وجولة في حنات بحر متوسط. فهو لتقرير حقيقة ما قمنا بها في جولتنا على موانئ هذا البحر الزاخر فإننا لم نرى من هذه الموانئ إلا حالاتها ومقاهيها ولا أحسب الحديث عنها يسهم أحدا أبدا حتى الذين يختمون لذتهم هذه بأعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم So, and again, you see his style. His style really is in between different styles. It looks like Rahla, but it's not. It looks like Muhammad, but it's not. It looks like Sira, but it's not. It also looks a little bit like uh, um, uh, like what we call picaresque novel. The closest type to this is the picaresque novel. I don't think in the 1933 there was something related to the picaresque novel. But we know that the picaresque novel started in an in an Andalus, and that tells you the similarity between this. As a matter of fact, the Prince Picaresque, the picaresque novel has always been able to be. Uh, Arab of origin influenced by the Muhammad. So this is this is extremely extremely important. Um, how much time do I? Okay. Good. So um, so I'll try to conclude then. Europe is not the center. Jawla is, uh, so what the Jawla tries to do is uh, Europe is not the center. Jawla is an act of topographic resistance, blurring the center and the periphery. Abdul Aziz wrote an unconventional for author of the 1930s as he rebelled against traditional Arabic prose by inserting vocabulary from Tunisian dialect, uh, a linguistic process rare at the time. For example, he describes the the, 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 the ship as it's flowing. Telfus and that's very typically Tunisian Tunisian word and, and the like. Jawla is a liminal text that is the product of a liminal era and a liminal author who is after reconstructing a new culture, a culture that crosses the borders. Um, these are the three liminalities that we talked about. There is one more, and that's liminal me. Because, uh, because again, I have been having... Translation by itself is a liminal, is a liminal entity. When you, are, when you are working with translation, you are working in between cultures. We are looking between languages. <coughs> we are producing something that is not what it was there. There is always that in between. And it's quite hard really to reproduce the playfulness uh, and the, uh, of, of, of the writer. Just this, uh, this uh, example is, you can help me. Rahma Anf Ataturk al Right? So he said, Rahma Anf. In Arabic, Rahma means despite. Rahma Anf is despite, the same thing. So Ataturk, Kamal Ataturk al Adim the Great. So despite Kamal Ataturk the Great, but actually he doesn't mean Kamal Ataturk the Great, he means despite, because Arabic has despite the nose of. And that's that's the linguistic meaning. Despite is despite the linguistic the 
رغم ألف. So he said, ألف here refers to Kamal Ataturk. So his poet Kamal Ataturk, the great Kamal Ataturk, Ataturk, I hate his name. The great knows. I don't have a better way of translating it, but these are certain aspects of the translation that I have not found for. For example, word like Sadakti Ikayati Sadiqa Kadib. It's it's also hard like that. So in a way, this is the hardest part of uh, of, uh, of translating this text, and the work is still into. I mean, I'm still working on that. Thank you very much. So, for example, the Adamese would say, "The act of the shi'a is the sirri ha, and I want to abka, and I want to stop in the khala, and I want to ashwad the khali, the khafi, the khali, the khafi, 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 the so, um, Adonis, in a way, is talking about Hadar and so he as a deep into the unknown. The moment that you stop, the moment that you stop, then that's no longer Hadar. That's why he calls Nazik al Malaika. He says, uh, what's her name? Uh, uh, he said, Abu Damlam, Akthar wa Hadatha min Zak al Nazik al Malaika. Very, 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 very hard. Because then, how do you understand that? He understands because then he's a Nazik al Malaika, despite the fact that she was a pioneer in the the three verse, she wanted to make it into an acceptable, kind of limited, framed way of doing this in the sharp work. And I thought, you know, a sharp is always a deep into the unknown. Yeah. You said you're translating that book of this? Yes. Is that your translation of the title? Yeah, which one? What is it? A tour of the Mediterranean Caracas. Hmm? Mediterranean Caracas. That would be fun. Caracas. <laughs> Mediterranean Caracas. Okay. That sounds good. It will affect the market. Yeah. Well, the British have pubs for all. Any other questions? Just, so just to, okay. You were, you were talking about the beginning style of the Ali Baashi. Ali Baashi, and uh, you showed, like you showed us a, a paragraph where he spoke about himself, like his, his description of himself as a. How did that also uh, his beginning style? How did that uh, like manifest itself in the structure of the Jawla or the Ibn? Yeah. I think, I think, of course, um, first of all, I think we talk about the TLC, I don't know if you, and the, you know, grand narrative. It sounds like, you know, here, he's breaking the, the great grand narrative and he just, but he's still organized to a certain degree. He published these episodes, in a way, in the, in the newspaper. And so each one is, is, is about you know five, six pages. So they could stand on their own, each one. But the idea from the beginning, he said he was going through all these to reach to reach a sham and a standard. But we, we never have the visit of a sham or a standard. Yeah. But he is, I mean, the, the way he does it in my mind is reminds me of storytellers. He just tells the story and it is flows. Whether I don't think he's working on it, like you know, there is Taba, uh, I think, uh, I don't think there is much Sa'a in him, much, much Takalub. It's just he's, he's a very good writer because he writes in Tunisian Arabic. He has a lot of songs in Tunisian Arabic. So, I mean, each of his columns, does each one represent a single father? Um, no, it's just from one place to the other. For example, Turkey, he has like three different stories about Turkey. Because I think in the 1930s, Turkey was more important than any, 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 anywhere else. 
And for example, he takes Turkey as an example um, where really he, he considers the ذهبت تلك الفتاة التركية الساجرة التي التي كانت تلبس السروال بلا مظلة. So according to him, the the old Turkish lady who now now we have a new one who can speak uh, many languages. Previously was talking about the woman who can speak many languages, who can be as equal to men and all that. So he is he's not saying anything about Tunisia. He doesn't want to do the same problem as Haddad, but he's still saying this is what it is. He wants her to be Arab Muslim, but also he wants her to take some aspects from the from the uh, from the West. And he gives us image of three different types of women that he sees. One who is Mustaghriba, it's 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 Westernized, and that's not what you what you want. And one like a, almost a person to it, and one that he thinks knows languages, translates, speaks in different languages, and all that. And that's the type of woman he thinks probably a Tunisian woman should be that. Way. So he has. It's not like, you know, just like that. He has some messages that he's sending. He wants to make some changes to the culture. Well, thank you very much. Thank you. Uh, I